So for years, we've speculated that there will be uh, flowing water on Mars. And what we've discovered is uh, not only morphological evidence that these things are flowing on Mars, but we've also found spectral evidence that uh, you know, there's some sort of uh, liquid water activity playing in the formation of these uh, streaks that we see on Mars uh, now actually for five years. So uh, we made um, sort of a amazing spectral detection and uh, you know, it validates our hypothesis that these things are forming on the surface of Mars by uh, some sort of water, water activity. The question about drinking uh, these water is a very interesting one and it really depends on how salty this water is. For example, if you go to the ocean and try to drink uh, the salty ocean water, well, you know, you can drink it but it's going to have adverse effect on your body. So, you know, the short answer is no, we, we probably cannot drink this water. But uh, at the same time, it's a great resource and I'm sure in the future we'll be able to figure out a way to drink this water if we eventually go there. Yeah, so there are there are uh, different tools, right? So there's uh, so there are different tools that we use uh, that we use in this study to find out exactly what these th things are. Uh, the first tool that we used is Hi-Rite's camera, which is the most powerful camera we have ever sent to another planet, and that was great because it can look at tiny little features that are forming in the present-day Mars. And the other tool that we really had to rely on was uh, this uh, instrument called CRISM. It's a, it's a fantastic instrument, and what it can do is it can uh, observe the surface of Mars at a different wavelength uh, and look you know, for a different color. So we use Hi-Rise in conjunction with CRISM, and they took images of Mars at the same time. Maybe there was about a 10 second delay between Hi-Rise and CRISM. So by combining visual imagery with this, the spectral information, we were able to elucidate the formation mechanism and sort of like the, the mineralogy that makes up these features. Does this mean that there is life on Mars? Now that's a very good question and it's something that we all like to think about and ponder about but I think right now the study is too premature to say anything about that. We, we don't know. I mean the first the only thing we can conclusively say is that these places are probably a little bit more habitable than the rest of Mars which is bone dry but I mean we just don't know. We just need much more astrobiological characterization. Uh, we need to understand these features more. We can't really say anything about that right now. Our uh, main contribution in the project was devising the methodology and deriving the final results. I was involved in, I wrote the computer algorithm that was able to sort of elucidate signals from noise, from tiny little pixels that we see in CRISM. So my involvement was mostly conceiving the, the design, the study, and also figuring out the results and numerous co-authors in the paper. I mean, it's a collaborative effort. I mean, people, we have people from the United States, from France, uh, from everywhere, and it was really a joint effort. Thank you.